East African Crude Oil Pipeline ESCOP project. Uh, giving a background of this project, Uganda discovered commercially viable extractable oil deposit in 2006 and given that the country does not have uh, the infrastructure to transport this oil to overseas market, they had to build a pipeline. The country, again being a landlocked country, has to depend, depend on uh, its neighbors, that is Kenya and Tan uh, Tanzania, for the construction of this pipeline. The pipeline is meant to help in evacuation of oil from the oil fields in uh, western Uganda, Lake Albertine region to Tanzanian Tanga port for shipping to overseas market or markets. The project is known as East African Crude Oil Pipeline (ESUP) project. is also known as the Ugandan Tanzania Crude Oil Pipeline (UTCOP). Not for purposes of not is uh, confusing it with another one that was planned through Kenyan route. Uh, this project is a private sector-led project in collaboration with the government of Uganda and Tanzania. Uh, it is a transboundary project uh, which involves construction and operation of a buried pipeline to transport crude oil from uh, uh, the Ugandan oil fields in Kabale, Beseruka sub-county, Hoima district to Chongoleani Peninsula near the port of Tanga. Tanzania. Uh, the project will be uh, 1,443 kilometers long, 296 kilometers will be in Uganda, so, uh, some 10 districts in Uganda, and entering Tanzania through Bukoba, uh, Tanga, uh, all these regions. confused with another one that was uh, to pass through uh, Kenya. Uh, Kenya and Uganda had agreed to build a joint uh, project for the purposes of uh, evacuating their oil uh, for overseas shipping or to overseas market. But this never came to happen since Uganda uh, withdrew from that deal, citing some uh, uh, reasons, security, uh, strategic, and also some environmental concern, arguing that some of the areas there where the project was to pass are environmentally uh, sensitive. So they opted for the Tanzania route. Uh, later you're going to see that uh, the, uh, Uganda had three options. One option was to pass through the Northern Kenya uh, route. Uh, the other route was through the southern Kenya and then the, uh, the third route was through uh, Tanzania and they opted for that. That route uh, transverses uh, through 10 districts which comprise of Hoima, Kakumiro, uh, Rakai, Yotera, Mbende, Gomba uh, among others. In Tanzania it passes through Kagera, Geita, Shinyanga, Tabora, Sigida, uh, Dodoma, Manyara, and Tanga regions. So looking at the project components, the project will cost 3.5 billion US dollars. Uh, in terms of time or duration, it was planned to start in 2016 and be completed in 2019, 2020. It was supposed to take three years, but up to now, the construction element of that project has not started due to some delays, especially uh, with funding. So in terms of scope, the project will be 1,443 kilometers. It will be 24 inches or 61 centimeters. It will be an insulated, buried pipeline, and it will have several heating stations uh, for the purposes of ensuring that oil flow uh, easily. One characteristic of uh, uh, Ugandan oil is that it is viscous and waxy. And for it to flow easily, it has to be heated. That's why the project has those components of heating stations for the purposes of allowing the fuel to flow easily. So the pipeline will have a 
and evacuation capacity of 216,000 barrels per day. Other components include the above ground installations, which include pumping stations, which will be, uh, I think, 27. There will be some pressure reduction stations, both in Tanzania and Uganda. There will be a marine storage terminal uh, in Tanga. There will be an offshore load out uh, facility. There will be a loading platform for transfer of oil to oil tankers. There will be a main block valve stations. There will be electric tricks, uh, trains heating stations. There will be some electric sub uh, substations. There will be some new uh, roads which will be up uh, and others will be upgraded. There will be some facilities which will be uh, built, main camps, pipe yards, pipe coating facilities, among other components that uh, will make the project cost 3.5 billion. So in terms of route selection, as we said before, Tanzania had uh, three options and the route uh, uh, process started with the identification of a starting point. Starting point was uh, uh, Western Uganda and then a flexible end point. So end point could have been Lamu, uh, the, the, the other one Mombasa and then another one in Tanzania in one of the ports. Uh, so some numeral, some several screening studies were done for the purposes of uh, evaluating the constructability, the geohazards, the terrain, and also in environmental and social constraints uh, for pipeline. Uh, in 2015, a 50-kilometer wide road corridor was approved. Then in subsequent years, it was reduced uh, uh, by to 2 kilometers wide corridor in 2016, 100 meters wide in 2017, and then later in that year, it was reduced to 30 meters width within which uh, the pipeline was to be constructed. So there are several studies which have been done uh, for the purposes of de defining the final uh, design of the pipeline. Uh, there are some several surveys including geological, geophysical and geotechnical surveys uh, which are thorough uh, and comprehensive site investigation for informing the design and construction. Then we have the front end engineering feed, which was to determine the details on how the pipeline will be designed, uh, constructed, and operated. Then we have the environmental and social impact assessment, uh, which was done for the purposes of establishing the impacts on the on the uh, to the environment, both both natural and human and also to evaluate the potential environment, environmental and social risks and opportunities and also to design measures to avoid uh, mitigate and manage the negative impacts and above all identify and enhance the positive impacts that were to come out of this project so this study uh, is here has already been done and uh, approval have been granted in uganda it was granted in december 2020 in tanzania it was granted in february 2020 and both governments said that they are going to oversee the implementation of uh, uh, environmental management plan to ensure that environmental is safeguarded so another component of this project which needs to be uh, carried out comprehensively uh, identification of stakeholders and also uh, one of the stakeholders are the people who are going to be affected by the project. So for the purposes of land, uh, the project will require land for temporary and permanent structures. So this land need to be acquired by the project and for acquiring purposes, a resettlement action plan is used. So RAP describes the process through which land acquisition occurs, how composition and transition and relocation support, and livelihood uh, restoration of people who are affected by the project happens. So this process is, is ongoing, but it has been uh, met with some uh, problems, especially people who are sat not satisfied uh, on the compensation that they have received from the government. So this process is ongoing and uh, uh, it is one of the things that have delayed the project. 
Uh, in terms of project ownership, this project is owned by four entities. We have Total SC, which owns 45%. We have SNOC, which owns 35%. We have UNOC, Ugandan Com uh, National Oil Company, or Ugandan government, which owns 15%. And then we have Tanzanian government through its Tanzanian Petroleum Development Corporation, TPDC, which owns 5%. So these are the entities that own this project with the major uh, owner being the Total Sea of France. Uh, there are several agreements which have been signed to actualize this project. One of the pro one of the agreements is the HGA, House Government Agreement, which is a legal document uh, signed between the investor, which is Total SA in this case, and the host government, Uganda. So this agreement relates to governance of the rights and obligation of the parties in development, construction and operation of the project. Some of the components of this agreement include uh, project authorization, land uh, rights, local content, health, safety and environmental uh, issues and then we have the labor standards. So the other agreement is intergovernmental agreement to construct the pipeline which was between two countries, Tanzania and Uganda. This was signed in May 2017. So this agreement provided for the foundation of the project as well as other project agreements including shareholders agreement and financing agreement. The third uh, agreement is uh, Uga uh, between Uganda and Tanzania governments uh, which is the host and implementation agreement which was signed uh, in September 2020 13th uh, uh, day this month in a place called Chato in northwestern Tanzania. So uh, the parties are waiting to signing the financial agreement and uh, to make a financial investment decision. So this is one of the uh, uh, agreements or components that has delayed this project uh, uh, making the final decision to implement. So this project is uh, has a development team or has a team that is doing it first we have the special purpose vehicle or the project company which is total east african midstream or team uh, bv which is also the developer of this project then we have the project development committee uh, we have the multidisciplinary joint project development committee and then we have the project steering committee which is composed, which comprises of a permanent secretary of Uganda and Tanzania, and these entities report to the sector ministers. Uh, for purposes of making a decision, a cost-benefit analysis uh, need to be conducted, and it was developed before the finalization of the HGA uh, between uh, the various parties which are involved. So it is worth to note that a a uh, positive final de investment decision will only be taken if the project will provide a positive return on investment and if, if the project has a positive economic benefit to all the stakeholders. So these analyses had identified uh, various costs and benefits. In terms of cost, it identified uh, the amount of capital that will be injected, a uh, resettlement action plan implementation this will cost uh, uh, a huge amount of money for the purposes of compensating all those who are affected by the project. Then there are some environmental components where mitigation will be required. This will sometimes, in some cases, need change of uh, design and engineering uh, aspects. So this will cost some money. Then there will be compensation of the people who will be affected by the project uh, for various reasons. And then there is management of uh, and the mitigation of community impacts, and then the other costs which uh, are government related uh, in terms of responsibilities, and these cannot be easily quantified. For benefits, there's contribution to the economy. Uh, Uganda will earn some foreign currency out of sale of oil, and then Tanzania will earn some revenue out of allowing Uganda to ship its fuel or oil through the pipeline. So these two countries agreed that. Uh, Uganda will be paying $12 for every barrel that is transported through the pipeline. 
then there are jobs which will be created uh, during the construction period and also uh, during the operation period uh, these jobs uh, for, for Tanzania they expect that 20,000 jobs will be created during the operation period uh, in terms of business opportunities uh, there, are, there will be numerous during the construction and also during the operation period given that this project is a unique one one of a kind in this region there are some uh, element of knowledge transfers and skill development that will happen so new skills will be acquired by the people who will be employed by this project and they can use these skills uh, for purposes of developing future projects so in general there will be improvement of standard of living uh, due to this project uh, this project has uh, faced some uh, challenges and uh, delays one of them is that financial investment decision has taken long to be made uh, due to some dynamics some reasons that have occurred uh, studies have shown that uh, Uganda oil has reduced in value from 61 to 18 billion uh, due to world oil fluctuations and then the possible transition from fossil fuels to greener energy will affect the, the, the project given that the demand for oil might reduce. Then there are some environmental concerns that have been uh, uh, cited and uh, opposition from uh, environmental activists and communities. Uh, for example, there was a petition that was made in the East African Court of Justice and also another one uh, against Total France has been uh, made by civil societies and uh, journalists. Uh, there is also a global petition that was signed and that petition gained over 1 million signatories. Uh, in November 2020, some uh, 877 petitioners who included people who are directly affected by the project signed a petition to Total and other investors urging them not to uh, fund the project. In March 2021, some 263 charities uh, or NGOs turned the heat on the project uh, due to its pollution potential and they have urged bank and other financial institutions not to fund the project they sent a letter to all those who were intended to fund the project urging them not to go ahead so uh, these are the problems that the project has faced and some of these prob problems have led to a delay in the implementation of the project so this is an example of a, of a project uh, um, i mean a transboundary project and the dynamics that probably affects such kind of a project. Thank you.